Hi uh, there, welcome back to Odonet. All right, so today I want to talk about the new ArcGIS Webpack plugin that was released with version 4.7 of the ArcGIS API for JavaScript. The uh, plugin is up on GitHub. Uh, it's got some pretty extensive documentation to it, so uh, if you want to check that out, there's quite a bit in there. Um, there was a blog post, uh, if I get to it recently, on here that talks about the plugin, gives you kind of a high level overview and a quick intro to how to use it and build a little app with it, right? So this uh, this sample and the sample that's part of the um, uh, GitHub uh, JS API resources are both uh, TypeScript samples, but I just kind of want to go over today to do a, a very quick demo of getting set up with a project. Um, and we're just going to go ahead and use regular uh, JavaScript in this case. We're not going to do TypeScript. So let me get my project running. So I'm basically just do npm init with the yes, just so I get me a nice little uh, package there. And I'm going to go ahead and create a couple of files. Um, actually, let me start installing stuff. So let's do npm install. Uh, we are going to need the Babel loader, but um, because of the version of Babel I'm going to use, I want to use the uh, version 8 beta of the Babel loader. So let me install this first. It's going okay, so let's start installing some more stuff. Uh, npm i d. Um, okay, so what's going on here? So I'm installing Babel Core, the Babel presets, along with the uh, uh, React preset. I'm installing types for the JavaScript API. Uh, I don't need the Babel loader because I already installed the uh, version 8 beta one. And um, one key thing I hear I need is the Babel transform for the uh, modules to be AMD. So when you're working with the uh, ArcGIS Webpack plugin, the input files need to be AMD files, whether it's from TypeScript or Babel, but it's just going to consume the modules, then feed those modules back into the Webpack pipeline. So the output's not AMD, you just want to have uh, AMD input into the plugin. Okay, so that's all done. Let me go ahead and install the actual plugin itself. Um, how do I do this here? Am I doing this right? Uh, oh no, it's, yeah, sorry. Can't spell today. So ArcGIS Webpack. Oops, that's not, that's not right. That's at ArcGIS Webpack plugin. And again, I can't spell. So, okay, so that's installing. And it's going to install, when you install the plugin, it's going to install the JavaScript API as well as any of its dependencies uh, too. So, let's not worry too much about that. So, that should be pretty quick. There we go. Uh, so, now what I want to do is I want to have a Babel RC file um, for my Babel stuff. And now we're going to get into the magical uh, world of copy paste because, of course, I've already done this project once. I'm not full. Uh, okay, so here we go. So here's my presets. I'm going to use the Babel preset for uh, the, the default ones here, the preset environment variables. Or no, I'm sorry, not environment. But the preset environment, this is like the ES2015 and some other stuff. Uh, the React stuff, because I'm going to use React for this app. And again, the plugin to do the uh, transform to AMD modules. Okay, so we got that going. Uh, let's start writing some code, right? So I'm going to make a source folder. Uh, yeah, it's all I need, a source folder. And uh, I'm just going to make, uh, let's go, uh, oops, touch, source, uh, a config.js, right? So let's talk about that. Okay, so if you look at, let's come over here. If you look at the documentation, uh, not that one, uh, this one here. The documentation talks about the fact that you need to set the configuration so that it will um, load the workers from the CDN. And that's just a current limitation in the Webpack plugin because uh, the way the workers work, you can't just, uh, um, they don't work, uh, with the Webpack can't load them correctly at this point. Uh, something will be fixed in the future release. But for now, just uh, do this little configuration for the workers, loader config, so that it's going to point to the uh, CDN to be able to load uh, the worker files, all right? I don't know why that stupid output thing. I don't have an ESLint file, so I think it's it's mad about that. Ah, don't be mad, man. Come on. 
All right, so let's make a, an index.js uh, file uh, alongside my uh, config.js. So um, actually, no, I jumped the gun on that one. I, I shouldn't uh, have done that. So uh, we're not ready for an index.js yet. So first, let's talk about what we're going to do. So I want to make another directory for components. And in that directory, uh, I can spell components. I want to have a, uh, a header. All right, so this is going to be pretty simple. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. And again, through the, uh, the magic of copy paste, I'm just going to copy and paste in my uh, simple little header component. Now, all it's going to do is I'm, I'm bringing in React. I've got some little CSS I'm going to use here. This is the Calcite uh, CSS stuff, which no, I didn't think I installed. So I'm going to install that right now. npm i dash d as re no, that's all right. Hold on, wait. I need more copy uh, paste magic because uh, uh, the Cal site's not published to npm. So what I need to do is uh, do it like this. Oh, there we go. It's the Git. I missed the GitHub uh, part. Okay. So now while I'm installing Cal site, makes my a little bit here. So I'm gonna be using some Cal site classes for this little component. It's just a little header. Let's go to the top of the page, and it's just gonna have the title on there. Uh, there's not a whole lot going on here, but it is part of my app. Um, so the next thing we want to do is I want to create a uh, component to hold my map view. So just do call it web map view. Yeah, it should work. And let's check that out. And again, copy paste magic. Power of the internet, people. Oh, come on, paste. There we go. Okay, so I'm bringing in the scene view. I'm bringing in React. Notice I'm just writing my code like I normally do, right? I create my little component. Uh, when the component is mounted, I'm gonna, that means when it's added to the page, and I think these names change. I don't know. I gotta go back and check. It doesn't matter. Uh, so when this this component is added to the page, I'm gonna create my scene view. I'm gonna pass some properties to that view. So notice uh, this dot props dot web map. So this is expecting a property of web map, and the container is gonna be this dot map div. Now where did this dot map div come from? That's this little element right here. My component itself. I give it a ref. For an element, and I just make this dot map div equal to element. This is some React magic, so if you want to look that up, uh, you know, I'll look up some React stuff and how this works. But that's a pretty basic there. So okay, so I've got my two components. I've got a header. I've got a uh, web map view, and now I want to use them. All right, so let's go to index.js now. Now I'm ready for you. I got you, boo. So we come in here, and I'm going to go ahead and bring in a promise shim. Right now, why do I need a promise shim? That's because when uh, Webpack uh, builds, uh, it includes uh, native promises in the Webpack output. But uh, maybe I need to support IE11 still, so I want to make sure to put a shim in there if I need it for my app. In my case, I do. You may not. You may not care about IE11 anymore. Congratulations. I'm so happy for you. Uh, but no, I do. Uh, I'm bringing in my little configuration file here, so that gets loaded up before everything else does. And then I'm just going to bring in the parts of the JavaScript API I care about, which is a feature there in the web map. And I'm going to go ahead and use my React components, bring in React. I've got some methods here that are just going to go ahead and add a, a div to my screen. Um, notice this one here, add DOM. I'll talk about this in a moment. Basically, what I'm doing here is I'm just going to add a little element to the page that I'm going to attach the React application to. And I've got some other functions here to create my feature layer, create the web map, no big deal. So when I create the web map component, I'm passing this uh, web map as a property, as well as this onload method as a property. So that's basically just going to zoom the feature layer to the full extent. No big deal there. So, okay. So that's pretty much all done. Now, notice in here, I don't have an index.html file. What kind of wizardry is this? Right? Oh, I'm jumping the gun. Sorry, sorry. I need a CSS uh, stuff right too. So let's go over here, uh, source. CSS, now I'm going to touch source CSS. Uh, what do I call it? Main SCSS. That is a SAS file. So I've got my SAS file here. And um, again, uh, wizardry of the internet and magic. Uh, I'm bringing Calcite Web. And with Calcite Web, I need to overwrite some of the image paths and the font path here just because. Um, that's something I do because everything's installed via node modules. I'm bringing in the light theme for the JavaScript API and then my index. So I need another index file here. So let's just do 
index.scss, uh, again, which is a SAS file. And it's just to add that to the index here. I have some little uh, styling happening here. Don't worry about this too much. Uh, what's cool, though, is if you look at the uh, index file, I'm just importing this uh, SAS file in my types in my JavaScript code, right? I know, magic. Uh, and again, like I mentioned before, there's no index HTML file. So what the heck is going on in here? What kind of wizardry is this, right? So, okay, let's make my Webpack config. Okay, so let me bring in everything I'm using for this uh, Webpack config. Let's come over here, copy paste again. Ooh, magic. Okay, so there's my web, there's my plugin for the ArcGIS JavaScript API. Um, there's an HTML Webpack plugin, which I'm going to use. And I've got this mini CSS extract plugin, which uh, only works with Webpack 4, which is what I'm using because everything just kind of works. It's cool. I don't got to worry about too much. All right, so let's do a module.exports equals, right? Okay. There's that. Now I need an entry point. I need to have an entry point for this application. So that entry point is going to be my uh, index.js file, uh, what the one that we just wrote, right? So that's going to be where I want uh, my Webpack config to look at to find stuff. Now, where do I want to put it? Uh, I want to have these file names um, uh, called bundle.js and just going to have the name uh, .bundle.js. And public path, I think I only need public path for um, when I use dev server. Uh, I'm not going to worry about that right now, though. I'll just leave it. So let's do module, uh, modules and objects. So these are all the different. Um, if I have files that are going to be um, loaded via Webpack, I, I want to have some uh, loaders for those files. Uh, so for example, the JavaScript isn't going to just work in a browser. I need to compile that JavaScript to something that'll work. So I'm going to use Babel Loader. Um, this cache directory too just kind of speeds up the um, Babel build process over multiple iterations. And then I'm importing that SAS file, right? So when I import the SAS file, I need to load, go through the SAS loader, feed that to the CSS loader, and then I'm going to feed that output into this mini CSS extract plugin loader. And I'll show you how that works in a second. So uh, if I come down here, module. So again, it's a plugin loader. So I need plugins array. And plugins is always going to be an array. I'm pretty sure. I don't know if I've ever seen a not an array. Um, so then we do new ArcGIS plugin. And bam, that's it. That's all I got to do there. There's no, uh, nothing else that needs to happen in that particular case there, right? So now I'm going to go ahead and I want to have this HTML Webpack plugin. This is going to create an index HTML page for me, so I don't have to do it. It's so simple, right? Nothing I got to do there. Uh, I'm going to give it a title, my ArcGIS Webpack app, and then I have this mini CSS extract plugin. It's going to take the CSS that gets passed in through this uh, SAS loader, CSS loader, in here, and it's going to output it into my um, output directory. Now, by default, Webpack 4 is going to go ahead and output um, all builds files and built files to a disk directory. Okay, so that's it for my plugins. Uh, I need to have this little bit here, so I need to have this resolve object basically telling it um, where I can uh, resolve modules from when I try to look for them. Uh, basically, look at my source folder and node modules, and I'm only concerned about JavaScript files and SAS files. All right, so okay, so this little bit here, we need to have this externals here to uh, so that Webpack doesn't try to load the WebAssembly files that are used for the projection engine. Um, those are handled uh, inside the JavaScript API, uh, so we're just going to ignore them for now, but they're going to be handled uh, uh, some other methods uh, via the workers and stuff for the JavaScript API. Then this little bit here, Node, this is so that the Webpack output does not include a um, uh, the node process and no, node global objects in the build. Uh, we don't want them there because uh, they just they break the build. Okay, so my package.json. Um, this does not look 100% here. I think I might have done something wrong. Uh, did I do React? I know I didn't install React. Oh man, what am I doing, guys? And I should have done this as a uh, save. Uh, React and React DOM. There we go. Okay. I knew I was forgetting something. Uh, well, you know what? I'm also forgetting even Webpack. Why, why don't you guys tell me anything? Okay, so... Uh, okay, I think that is... Yes, this is all the stuff I need. I need a Webpack. 
the Webpack CLI, I need that mini CSS extract plugin, HTML plugin, CSS loader, node SAS, SAS loader, SAS resources loader. No, I don't know if I need SAS resources loader, but it's on my list. Let's do it anyway. It's going, it's going. All right, this one's going to take a minute. I'll be right back. All right, that was fun. So our project is, uh, all right, got all my dependencies finally installed. Uh, I do need to add a build script because we're gonna want to build this application. I'm just gonna run the Webpack in production mode when I run this build. So let's run the build. Okay, so that's all done. Let's go ahead and take a look at uh, the output here. Um, oh, this, this theme I'm using, I can't tell where I'm at. Okay, there we go. Okay, so uh, these are all the built files. These are a lot of um, uh, images that get copied over just in case they're needed. There's a lot of bundles in here, but uh, don't worry about too much about that because not all of these bundles are going to get used in the demo application. It's just uh, the way the build uh, works right now. So, okay, let's look at this particular application now. Oops, I forgot to CSS. I totally forgot to save that. I got to rebuild. Okay, uh, one second. Let me do a build again, and I will be right back. Okay, this build is done now. Let's go ahead and look at the output application. All right, so uh, how I am still zoomed in. But uh, okay, so here's our app. I'm in a globe. All right. Get there, my tilt. There, I'm tilted. All right, so I'm in 3D here, and I've got a total of nine JavaScript files that got loaded. So remember about, uh, I don't know, a whole bunch of bundles got generated with this Webpack build, but I'm not using them all. I'm only using nine out of that. So um, no big deal. And that's just the way, um, you know, the, the bundles are working with JavaScript API right now. Uh, we're going to work on trying to improve that in the future. But there you go. That's a quick rundown how you could use the um, ArcGIS Webpack plugin to create a very simple uh, JavaScript application using React, the JavaScript API, and a Babel loader uh, with the Webpack config and everything like that to get your application up and running. All right, hope you enjoyed it. Thanks. Mm -hmm.